Hello YouTube, today we're going to install Ubuntu 19.10. I want to install it in VirtualBox. You can follow along with your actual laptop after you get the Ubuntu uh, ISO image. Uh, you can also um, install it in VirtualBox like I am doing or on VMware. However you choose to do it, the process will still be the same. So let's take a look at the actual window for Ubuntu or how to get the software. You would just type in ubuntu.com slash download and they'll have several options for you to download their images. And the one we're gonna to use today is Ubuntu Desktop. You can also come down to Ubuntu Server. They show that they have Ubuntu Flavors, Ubuntu for IoT, and Ubuntu Cloud. However, today we're just going to use Ubuntu Desktop. You just come to it and you click on it. And you'll see which versions you want to uh, install. They usually have the LTS one, which is long-term support. Available to download and install first. They have the recommended hardware right here. 2 gigahertz dual core processor or better. 4 gig system memory. 25 gigs of hard, uh, free hard drive space. Now, most modern laptops have more than this. If you have purchased one in the last five years and you would like to take that old laptop or something that's laying around or a desktop and install it, more than likely you'll be fine. You'll have something that meets these requirements. So don't be worried about that. And all you have to do is just hit the download button and it'll start to download. Also, remember, if you can, go ahead and donate to uh, Canonical because they're providing a, a free software and doing a lot of good things in the community. I'm just going to go ahead and stop to cancel that because I already have the software and we're going to go ahead and move on over to VirtualBox. I'm going to come to VirtualBox, start new, Ubuntu 19.10 is the version I chose to go with. And I'm going to hit select next. And if you're not really familiar with VirtualBox, go ahead and check out our other videos for uh, our other video tutorials for VirtualBox, how to install a VM, how to work with VMs in VirtualBox. I'm just going to go ahead and go through this and make sure I have that minimum requirement. Is that right? Yep, that is uh, 496 for four gigs. That works. And I'm going to go ahead and start it up. And now I must select the startup image. I just downloaded it. It's right there. Ubuntu 19.10. Go ahead and start it. All right, it's ready and loaded up. Let's go ahead and select install Ubuntu. You can also try it if you just aren't sure about it and you might be overriding another disk that's um, actually on your system. You can just run it in the live CD format. I wanna go ahead and right into the install, hit install Ubuntu. And then select your language. I'm going to use select English for US. 
you can start to uh, you can do a normal installation with all these extras or you can do a minimal installation I'm gonna go ahead and do a minimum installation so it'll be a little faster for this video you can also do updates and third-party software I recommend doing that on your installation doing the normal and the third parties and the download the updates as well you don't want any um, you don't want to be susceptible to any threat security risk or anything like that so make sure you always stay updated and you, and you just want to have the latest software updates as well for any uh, applications just hit continue and sorry selected here erase this and install Ubuntu I'm going to select install now continue pick your time zone I'm selecting New York pick your name And then it's going to go ahead and go through the install process. And the cool thing about Ubuntu is it gives you all these little tips and you can view what's actually going on during the install process. And you can see if you select one of these uh, navigation tabs, you can find out even more about it. Find out about their, their nice repository of applications. You can also install some of their, their uh, music applications and they also have Spotify and VLC media player if you are you intend to play any uh, videos or anything like that or even movies that you already have uh, on your system digitally. Then the, the free and open source software that it all, all that it comes with, like if you use Photoshop or something like that, you can go ahead and use GIMP to edit images. You have uh, the video editor as well and Shotwell for uh, editing photos. And then you have your, your uh, web browsers that come with the system. You can also install additional ones like Google Chrome, Opera. Uh, and the list goes on but it'll come with uh, Firefox and it's uh, as well as it supports Chromium and then you have your open office uh, tools LibreOffice Writer, LibreOffice Calc so LibreOffice Writer is just like uh, Word, Microsoft Word it has some compatibility with it. like if you're using DocX formats you can go ahead and use LibreOffice instead it's a free version instead of going ahead and spending the hundred dollars on the Microsoft Office suite now you will experience some compatibility issues I, I you know I can't lie about that I've experienced some problems with it in the past just like formatting and the, the um, and just the spacing so keep that in mind if you want to try to use LibreOffice Writer it's not going to solve all your problems but it will allow you to get through a lot of problems. And I'm just going to go back. Libre Calc is just like using Excel. So it does have all the same Excel formulas like add, sum. You also have the, uh, the ability to make different spreadsheets and highlight them, make tabs, stuff like that. Then you have Libre Office Impress, which is like um, PowerPoint. Where you can make slides and they're showing an image of it right here in the window. And we're going to the next one now. And then they have different access and accessibility features, assistive technologies, language support, appearance. Linux has come a very long way in being user friendly and being clickable, um, as I like to call it. You can just select buttons and, and do all the things you do as far as um, it relates to like using a Windows or uh, using Mac it's very easy and user-friendly now and as you can see in the window here it's hard to kind of see but 
They have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, you can change your background to different images. Uh, you select your language reason, region, notifications. You can search your system. And then you can set your networking easily. If you're wired, you can do wired, wireless. Um, looking at, you can just select the logout button. They have nice, nice GUI. And then you have um, volume control and settings. It's easy, nice, nice layout. And then on the last page here, they have help and support. Anything you might need, any questions um, that you may have, you have your FAQs, stuff like that about Ubuntu, you can read more up on them. You can follow their community and uh, the rest of the commercial support that they do have. All right, the installation has uh, completed, so we're gonna go ahead and restart now. And don't forget to remove the image. Come on, check that box, force them out. And then press enter. Now when you look, well, first log in, you can select these things right here. If you have online accounts, you can link them up if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. And if you see this screen right here, you can choose to improve, uh, help um, improve Ubuntu. I usually say no, I don't want anyone watching me at all. And then you have location services. You can opt in or opt out. I'm going to say opt it out. And then you're ready to go. You can use software to install apps like the and done. And now, as you can see, we have your home folder right here on the desktop. They have a trash can for you. This right here in the lower left hand corner is how you can get to all the applications. So if you just select that, all the applications come up on the screen. You can see uh, the calculator, different files, your file structure, and your, uh, your file directory structure is there. Firefox, if you wanted to browse, the Ubuntu App Store, the text editor, um, software updates. All right, and this is the file structure here. Is home and this is usually going to be populated with desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, public templates, and videos. And then you have desktop, would be empty, documents, would be empty, downloads, music, pictures, videos should all be empty. But you have a basic starting point for you to uh, be able to work with if you want to put your documents somewhere, they already have that set up for you, and then your desktop, if you allow. If you like putting things on your desktop, and if you like music, you can store all your stuff here. And by default, when you download something, it'll all go to your download folder, which is a good thing. A great way to organize. All right, that's pretty much it. Go ahead and get useful, used to it. Play with it. Select as many buttons as you can. Click around. Search. Play with the browser. The file system, the bunch of software center, go ahead and search as much as you can. See what free software you can find. That's the best way to learn. Please comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks again for watching Case Technologies.
Let's look at this text editor. 